Bye, y'all. All right. So let's get to it. Let's jump right in. Jump right in. So I had a wonderful short conversation with the lady today. And we were talking about, I don't know, I, I normally don't just come out of the woodworks and say this, but I said to her, I said, you're really sweet. You remind me of my best friend. And she said, oh, thank you. Um, she has been friends with her female friends ever since they were in high school, if not earlier. And they're still friends to this day. And I told her, I said, I had, you know, a best friend too. And we did not do the typical, some women do this nonsense. Um, you know, she thinks she's all that, uh, you know, jealousy, jealous of each other, the way you look. And she's trying to take my man and we didn't do that BS. She said, oh, me and my girlfriends, we don't do that either. We, we just don't. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say there aren't some women you should avoid if you're a woman. By all means, especially if she's a mean girl. We're a little too old for mean girl, you know, mean girls. Um, but there is something so precious about a female friendship that you will never get with a man. All right. My nose is tickling. Um, you'll never get with a man. My face is just itchy. I'm, I was outside, but still, what the hell? Anyway, um, there's something special about a female friendship that doesn't compare to any man that you have ever known, any man that you will ever know. There's just something special and there's something precious about having a female friend. It cannot, men cannot replace that. I don't care how close you and your man are. It is not the same thing. Um, I will always miss the hell out of my friend, Gail. She's the one that died of cancer, for those of you who don't know. Um, just a wonderful, beautiful person. Deep in her soul, she's a beautiful person. We didn't, like I said, we didn't fight over stupidness. We just were mature. We just, we, we loved each other. I said, like I told the young lady today, I said, she was non-romantically my soulmate. She was like, oh, I get it. You know, I, I get it. I've had, you know, I've got two best friends that were like that, you know. It's a hard topic because, ugh. That pain, you know, that emotional pain is like a karate kick to your soul. Um, Gail and I, I you know, I, I, I've talked about this before. We used to work with troubled t teenagers. That's how we met. We worked together. And um, although people on YouTube, all up and down YouTube are saying, oh, your coworkers are not your friends and this and that and they da, 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 da. Okay. That may be true in a lot of cases, but Gail and I were indeed best friends and we met at work and we hung out after work. Now, is that an everyday occurrence? You find your best friend at work? Not always and probably usually not, but we we, we were just fortunate that way. Um, if you want to see somebody outside of work, that's a big deal because <laughs> normally when you're off work, you're like, peace out, I'm I'm gone. You know, that kind of thing. But no, we, we loved each other, truly loved each other. And for those of you women who don't trust other women because you've had bad experiences or, you know, somebody you thought was a friend tried to take your man and all this other, I encourage you to give it a shot. If you have the opportunity to become friends with a woman, it's just... Your your um with the right friendship, woman friendship, you know. You're a bird and and you could fly free. You don't have to hold back. I shouldn't say this. You're gonna take it personally. What do you mean by that? 
I've had a so-called friend like that and you always had to be on pins and needles with her and she was just, she comes from a severely abusive background. So her, par her parents were severely abusive, locked her in the house as she's married and has a child. She went overseas to visit them. Why? I have no idea. You know your parents ain't shit. And she went to visit them and um, they locked her in the house. She had to couldn't finagle to get out of the house. So she said, I need to get out so I could get a smoke because she smokes. She didn't smoke in my damn house because I don't play that. Anyway, um, and she called her friends when she was out there. I need you to come get me. And then her parents tried to act like they were good people. I'm sorry we're meeting under such circumstances. Shut your ass up. You're the reason she acts like she does. Anyway, I am unique in the sense of I come from dysfunctional parents, but I don't act that way. But I've also been to therapy, multiple therapists, because you got to, therapists are like shoes. You got to try on the right pair until you find one that fits. That's just, you know, that's just the way it works. And, um, I don't know. It just, we had something so beautiful and so special. And, um, I haven't met anyone like her since nobody could fill her shoes because there's only one Gail. <laughs> okay. Um, and I would never expect them to be exactly like her because no one could be, no one could be you like you can, you know what I mean? If you're a good person, if you're a bad person, nobody wants to be you. But anyway, um, I understand that there's women that cannot be trusted. I understand that there's women that probably want your man. She'll, she'll get with anybody not bolted to the ground. Uh, you know, she's jealous of you and makes backhanded compliments and things like that. Those are not real friends. Real friends don't do that. Real friends allow you to be you. You are free. You're like a bird let out of the cage. You can be free. You can say what you feel and, and mean what you say. And you're not going to be judged for what you said. And what the hell is that supposed to mean? And da, 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 da. And I met people like that and they're exhausting. You know, one of the females that I knew, she's just exhausting. Okay. Uh, myself and my other friend, Sil, I call her Silver. We had a great friendship too, but she was having marital problems after a while and things got, the whole dynamic got changed and then she eventually relocated and she got a divorce from dummy. And then she married this other guy and her whole world revolves around him. And so I don't think we'll ever see each other again because it, the dynamics has changed. Now, Gail was married and Gail had three kids, but the difference between... Gail and a lot of women is she had a life outside of her marriage. She had a life outside of being a mom. She needed girl time just for herself. I love y'all, but go on somewhere. <laughs> you know, she needs a break from being a mom. She needs a break from being a wife. She needs a guy dang break. So she, me and her would go out and do our thing and have a good time. And it was never, I can't hang with you because I'm married and you're not. We didn't have that bullshit. Of course, I was married at the time too, but we weren't surgically attached to our husbands. Like, babe, I love you. You know, I love you too. Make sure you got your key. I don't want you waking me up when you come in here type of deal. You have to have a life outside of your relationship. Your relationship is not your everything because if it's your everything and that is your identity, your entire identity, when that, if that person dies before you, you're probably not going to last that much longer because your whole world was them. You are two separate people. You should have two separate lives and you have your lives together. See what I mean? Your husband don't want to go to the store with you and help you choose the, the proper nail polish. Usually that's what girls are for. You know, we go to the mall and we go to the pet store and we go, oh, at all the babies in there, the pups in there. And, you know, we look at jewelry and clothes and whatever. There's just things that girls do that guys ain't really into that. Okay. 
they're into watching football and basketball and talking about cars and this motor is better than this motor and this part and that, that, that. <laughs> we ain't trying to hear all that and they ain't trying to hear all our girl stuff which mascara do you like men ain't trying to hear all that okay usually um this so they just have a special place in your heart and you could talk to them about your relationship they don't necessarily tune you out like a guy would because that's girl talk. And so all he hears is want, 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 want. There's just a special thing with a female friendship that you do not get with a man because he's not a woman. It's just a different dynamic. And, you know, like I said, I, I've never, I, I've never met anyone like her. And it, it's sad. Uh, but I encourage you, if it's possible, for you to embark on a female friendship with someone, don't turn down the opportunity. We're in a lonely, dark, grimy, and slimy world. Y'all know why. Those of you that are smart know why. I don't have to draw you a picture. And so all we have is each other. That's all we have. So... If you have the opportunity to share your life with a woman and you sit by the fireplace and you're drinking wine or you sit out on a porch and you got a little fire thing going and you or you're drinking hot chocolate and you're looking at the stars and you're talking about past relationships. Well, who did you have a crush on back in the day in high school? You ever had a crush on somebody? There's just a special dynamic there that you do not have with anyone else when you, you know when you're close with a woman. So obviously you have to vet women. Obviously you have to make sure that this person can be trusted. But to be quite honest with you, when you click with somebody as a friend, you click. There's no effort. It just merges together. I didn't have to work on being her friend. I could just be myself and she could just be herself. All right. Now, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. It really is. There was never jealousy. Jealous of what? Jealous of what? She's my baby. You know what I mean? Even though she, I think she was older than me. <laughs> She's still my baby. I don't care. <laughs> we just, I don't know. It's hard to describe. It's just a beautiful thing. A beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, there was, there's never jealousy. There was never any, I don't know. Like I said, backhanded compliment. We, we just didn't do that. We just, that's just stupid. We didn't do that. We just didn't. We just never did. So I was trying to befriend a young lady on here on YouTube. I don't know how years ago. And she didn't really want to be friends because she's in another country, which what does that have to do with anything? And she was a mother. So what? Obviously, it doesn't click. Me and Gail clicked. She had three kids and was married. We just fell together like puzzle pieces. It wasn't one of those things where I have kids. You don't, don't, don't get too close to me as a friend because we have nothing in common. We're not immature and stupid that way. You don't judge people. If you click, you click. Stop looking for failures before you even kick it off. You're looking for reasons why it wouldn't work out. You just, you just nitpicking. Me and Gail never did that. Girl, I love you. We never, we never did that stupidness. We ain't got nothing incompatible. You wear pink nail polish and I don't. So, you know, you know, we, we didn't do that. You got a man and I don't. So I we, we ain't got nothing to say to you. You know, why did you say that to my man? I've been through that with other bitches before. And yes, she's a bitch. This other woman, she's just. Couple shit, a couple sandwiches short of a picnic. How I maintained a friendship with her, one-way friendship, I might add, for many years, I don't know. But I eventually got tired of it. I got up to here, and I couldn't do it anymore. I just simply could not. She faked that she had cancer when she didn't. I, oh, Jesus. You, you, Yeah, you don't want to go there with me. <laughs> you don't have time for that story. <laughs> um, I did a video many moons ago called When Your Friend hates you and it's all about her the one who is toxic as hell anyway when you have a great click with a woman there, there's nothing that can replace that so please 
embrace the opportunity if you ever have the chance to embrace the opportunity is just indescribable really indescribable I miss the heck out of her I do what happened was for those who don't know the story we worked together we hung out together we did everything together and um we were out one day and I used to work in the medical field so I know when something looks a little weird so I seen this mass on her thigh and I said what is that she said I don't know I've always had it I said can I touch it? I'm not a lesbian but can I touch it she said yeah so I'm like pretend this is her thigh does that hurt no does that hurt any of that hurt no hmm okay it didn't bother her so it didn't bother me many years later we found out that was cancer so she eventually she got treatment for cancer she had to have chemo and radiation it destroyed the muscle in her thigh so when she drove she had to lift up her leg and take it off the accelerator to put it on the brake lift it off the brake and put it on the accelerator oh god nightmare okay thanks radiation um nightmare nightmare and then she was in remission and i got to see her we were always in different states well not initially but after so many years she branched off and went back to uh georgia and i was in louisiana and you know whatever we and then i traveled across the united states and everything and i would visit with her when i could and anyway um she was in remission when i saw her her hair was just starting to grow back. It was cute. It was only this tall and it was super curly. She looked like Shirley Temple. She was so cute. And then she came out of remission. Um, she didn't tell me she came out of remission. And when she was no longer in remission, the cancer came back. Apparently it, it must have metastasized and um, became terminal. And I didn't know that that had happened. And she never told me. Broke my heart in a million pieces when I found out. I didn't find out till a year later that she had passed. Her husband didn't have my number. Her kids don't have my number. They're just lost their mom and he lost his wife. So Ken lost his wife. So there was just nobody in a position to call me and say, girl, I'm really sorry to tell you this, but, um, so I didn't find out till a year later. We had let, you know, we had let time slip months and we always caught up with each other boom pick up right where we left off there was never attitude where have you been i haven't heard from you in three months where you been it wasn't like that it wasn't like that it was beautiful so she died and i had no clue and i end up going to a support group for people who have lost someone significant to them and the people in the group said she was probably trying to protect you i said protect me from what I would have dropped everything to be there for her. And they're like, well, you know, she considered herself protecting you. And I'm like, yeah, I felt robbed. I felt robbed of the opportunity to be by her side when she needed me the most. Because that's what you do. If you're a good person, you're not a toxic asshole. If you're a good person, you're going to be there for that person no matter what. And we wouldn't have been sitting there holding each other and bawling. We would have been checking out new hairdos and what hair looks good on her. And we would have been in the bedroom using our deodorant as a, like we did as a kid, use your deodorant as a microphone and singing Whitney Houston songs and watching romance movies or whatever the hell in a bowl of ice cream. And it, it you know, it just would have been in our pajamas. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like it wouldn't have been boohoo boohoo. We would have been, I mean, sometimes it would have been sad, but I don't know. It just felt robbed. I did. But again, if you have the opportunity to be close with a woman friend, don't run from it. Embrace it. Embrace it. Because you just never know. You just never know. And the world needs a whole lot more love in it. What? Y'all know that. All right? Y'all take care. Much love. And talk to you next time. Bye.